having a child, not being able to be injured and to live forever, and then you can die whenever you really actually like want to. Pick a card. What are you gonna pick? Not in this one. <laughs> Welcome back to Yapology. A safe place for me to not shut up. I actually think I said that in the last video. But it's true. Um, and specifically about, today we're talking about movie tropes that I love. I'm being so serious right now. However, first, obviously, we're having a check-in. So, audio check-in is Girl in Red. Um, I actually, do you know what happened? It's on my day list. I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what album specifically I have been enjoying. Let me get it up on, on my trusty handy dandy iPad. The album is called If I Could Make It Go Quiet. The one that looks like that. Song highlights are You Stupid Bitch. There's one that's just a full stop. So I'm assuming cause she's, I actually don't know where she's from. I'm assuming it's like period. Um, and then I'll Call You Mine and Midnight Love. Um, yeah, it's just like, I don't think I've really listened to like, I think maybe three Girl in Red songs. Then I discovered her, the title track for her most recent album would, it's called Doing It Again Baby. Loved that song. Then these four songs came on my day list and I was like, slay. So that's my, what is it? My audio check-in. Visual, I have just started watching Geek Girl on Netflix. And when I tell you, I was so excited when I saw the trailer for this because I read the original Geek Girl book 10 million years ago when I was, I don't actually know how old I was. February 2013, I was nine. Yeah, I was nine in February 2013. I turned 10 at the end of that year. Whoa, 10 years ago. Don't play with me right now. That is crazy. But there's, I know that there's like so many of them. I don't think I read all of them. I think I read definitely the first three. Right, right. So we're talking tropes. We are talking tropes. There's a few that are kind of really important to me. And one is the arch nemesis trope. Uh, tell me why I love it when they have an arch nemesis in a movie. It's like someone who you're just constantly thinking out clever ways to make the other's life miserable. The way I have an arch nemesis, but he doesn't even know he's my arch nemesis. He just does so many things that piss me off. He works in the same company as me. I've never met the guy. Um, I actually don't know if I'm supposed to say that on the internet, but I've never met this man, but he does things so often that just make my life more difficult. And I don't even think he knows that he is my arch nemesis, but he is. Except I don't do things that make his life easier. I mean, more difficult. He just does it to me. Am I the hero? Does that make me the hero? Also want to quickly, briefly show you my cooking skills. I've just done my meal prep for the week and I made these little savory muffins for my lunches. I completely made it up. I don't know if they taste good or not, but they look pretty fucking good. So super proud of myself for that one. Then we have the typical enemies to lovers. This I think it's so slay. Like whenever I read a book that has like enemies to lovers in it, I am giggling. I am kicking my feet. I'm like, oh my God, you know? And I love it. I think it's so brilliant because this is also the thing about, this kind of ties in with the whole arch nemesis thing. If you didn't have some form of feelings for someone, why would you do such horrible things to them? Might be feeding into some delusions. People shouldn't be doing horrible things to you. Don't let that justify you accepting and tolerating bad behavior. But when it's fictional, <laughs> but yeah, 
certainly, oh, oh, I'm just thinking about it now. Especially when it's had like a really big build up and then it finally happens and you're like, I fucking knew it, you know? An example of like kind of lighthearted enemies to lovers, um, well, lovers was in House of Anubis between Patricia and Eddie. Loved them, but then I wanted them to stay together. Actually still, I don't know if I've ever finished season three of House of Anubis to this day. Love the show, but after they got rid of Nina and Amber, Amber was a big one for me. I loved Anna Malboy Ten's ca character, and they just got rid of her. God piss me off. Bring her back. Get her back there. But anyway, trope, here's actually a trope that I don't like, that I really, honestly, it really annoys me. A bit hypocritical, because one of my favorite TV shows is Vampire Diaries, but I hate the brother love triangle. I said it. Love a good love triangle, but also whenever I'm like observing a love triangle, whether I'm like reading it or watching it, I always have a favorite. And I'm not gonna tell you if I'm team Damon or team Stefan, but do you know what I am? Team fucking Edward. Fuck Jacob, oh my God. Talking about Twilight here for those of you that don't know. But also if you don't know, like go away, please. If you've never seen Twilight, I don't think we can be friends. It's written, I've never actually read Wattpad, be, what, uh, I've never actually read Wattpad before, but I imagine the way that they speak in Twilight is kind of how reading Wattpad would feel. And I don't like it, but I still love Twilight. That love triangle, it just pissed me off because it's just like, you're overstepping here, babe. Like, she, to me, she was always your friend. And to him, I don't know what the fuck, but I don't care actually. But the whole brother thing, Cause that would not happen. Like I get this is fiction we're talking about, but any time I've like encountered like my partner's siblings, it's so like, no, do you know what I mean? Like it's so, the thought doesn't even cross my mind. Actually, one thing I do want to say about the Vampire Diaries while we're here, while we're on the brother love triangle, um, it just, you can just tell how much it pisses me off. While we're on the brother love triangle, um, and vampire diaries, I need to talk about how they, like, the whole Elena and Damon thing, uh, spoiler, sorry, um, when she kind of, like, says no to Damon, oh, it, maybe if we had met first, babe, if, because you did meet first, but also, like, he'd be a fucking felon. Because Damon is supposed to be like 20 something, at least. And she was supposed to be 16 in at that point. Actually, let me check. So she is supposed to be 17, which, although it's technically legal, I don't think you should put that in a movie. A movie? A TV show. He's 22. Right, okay. Got my facts straight. So you mean to tell me that a 22 year old and a 17 year old electric fucking chair piss off <laughs> genuinely when she's like oh maybe if we met first and then like they did meet first when she was 17 and i'm just like no no maybe if you met first no 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 also there's no this is another thing that jenny nicholson speaks about she brought this up in her like Vampire Diaries video and this is what was going through my head a lot of the time when they were, when I was watching this series for the first time. Why on earth do these people want to be human so bad? There is no chance, no chance that you're like, oh, 
yeah, but like if I had the choice, I'd go back to being human. And, oh, I want to be human again. Me when I lie. No, you wouldn't. Like you would so not after not having to deal with and especially putting myself in this position. I have like a lower back injury that's like it's there with me forever and I'm always like susceptible to lower back injuries. Not that this really kind of like matters, but it well it matters to me. But if there were a way for me to be like healed from that and to heal other people from that, absolutely. Also, like a hundred percent. And then I would never have to deal with any of those sorts of things ever again. Like dental pain. Don't know her. P paper cuts. Who'd have thought? Not me. I'm actually so bad for getting paper cuts as well because I'm very clumsy. Imagine never having to deal with a paper cut again. I'd be all up in that. No, you mean to tell me that you would give that up? Oh, just so you can have a kid? Fuck the kids. I'm sorry. Having a child, not being able to be injured and to live forever, and then you can die whenever you really actually like want to. Pick a card. What are you gonna pick? Not fucking this one. I'm being so serious. Also just adopt a fucking child. And actually that's one of the points that Jenny brings up because she says like, Elena is literally adopted. Why can't she just adopt a kid? And it's like, you can't tell me that you want to grow old. You're a liar. You are such a liar. Then also, one of the things that it says on here is that Damon has slept with like three people from the same bloodline. Obviously like Catherine and then Isabel and then Elena. No, 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 no. Because see if there was someone that had slept with my mother, I wouldn't touch them with a 10 foot fucking pole. I don't care if he looks like Ian Somerhalder or not. That's not happening. Oh, do you know what trope I do love? The fake dating. It's actually so, like every single time they fall for each other. I do love a good fake dating trope. Oh, and then always at the end where they're like, yeah, but it's fine, it was fake. No, it wasn't. It wasn't to me. It speaks to me. Fake dating speaks to me. Especially because not so long ago, I was super emotionally unavailable. So to me, that was like the perfect thing to do to figure out with you whether you actually liked someone. Because then you could have just been like, it was all fake. But also work on your emotional availability. Don't actually do that in real life. Just work on being comfortable with vulnerability. It's scary, but it's good. Another trope that I hate, and this one is mostly just due to like personal, like I was gonna say preference, but also it's like, no. So I'm just gonna tell you what it is. Someone cheats and then you give them a second chance absolutely not no way no chance could never be me never. once you're out stay out none of this oh i'm sorry it didn't mean anything shut up like no and that's also to me i know that this is like happens in movies but this one is like happens in real life too so to me it's just like you didn't know how you were feeling enough to communicate it but you did know how you were feeling enough to go and do that with someone else i think the fuck not you trick ass bitch i think that's enough yapping for today said no one ever but that's enough for me today, for you. And I will, <laughs> class dismissed. I'll see you next Thursday.